Welcome back to Sip the Tally Films. I'm your host, Coach Evans. And today I want to take a look at how the defense will look in 2024 with the roster being revamped. So what I want to do is, and you guys know we have a boatload of free agents pending. And in this little exercise, I'm going to assume that we only re-sign Justin Matter BK. He seems to be the front one runner to be re-signed and or tagged other than PQ. Uh, I think it's going to be really tough to have two guys making an, a, a huge amount of money at the same position. So for the sake of this exercise, I'm going to say that re we re-sign Matter BK or tag him, and he's the guy that we move forward with and we kind of get off of uh, PQ. So I'm going to use that as my basis going forward and let's just see what the roster could potentially look like now all the guys that are free agents i'm just going for the sake of this exercise we're going to move all from now we know that the cost is going to do what he do and bring some guys in maybe some guys we already have he may just wait to that second cycle and pull in some some vets from other teams that don't get signed we know how the cost works but just for the sake of this exercise and when we look at the final picture we want to look and see if we can, I ain't going to say duplicate, but get close to what we did defensively next season. All right, let's move to the little chart I made. All right, let's take a look at the chart that I made. Here it is. This is a little template I have for this exercise. We'll start with the interior, and we're going to start with BK because he's the guy that I chose to sign over pq because we can't again have two high caliber high paid guys at the same position and that would have pq and rope on at the same position even though we can but it's just not feasible um we just signed michael pierce toward the end of the last season so he'll be in at that other interior defensive line position it's pretty safe to say odafi Owe will be the other starter at outside linebacker slash defensive end this is where I had a few issues on this other defensive end. I had three names that I, I felt like I had to pick from at this spot. One being the rookie from Ole Miss, Robinson. The other two options were guys that we really didn't see much of last year. Uh, David Ojabo, so I don't know how serious his injury is or whether he'll be ready to play next year or whatnot. And then Tyus Bowser. Tyus Bowser flirted with the idea of playing and John acted like he really didn't know what was going on and Tyus really didn't push back. So I don't know if this is a doghouse situation or what's going on with, with the organization and Bowser. But just from a football standpoint, if I had to pick out of those three guys, I'm going with Bowser. Bowser would best fit, you know, what we like to do with the outside linebacker slash defensive end guys. And um, just from a straight football standpoint, Bowser is the best option out of those three guys. Moving back to linebacker. Obviously, you know, we have one of the best linebackers in football in Roquan. So we'll plant him right there. The second linebacker, uh, the guy that has to replace Patrick Queen in this scenario. Everybody's front runner is Trent Simpson. I'm sure he'll have to compete for that spot, but... I think it's safe to say that he'll probably win that. It's probably his job to lose. Uh, I'm not saying he won't lose it, but it's probably his job to lose in that situation. Let's move back to the secondary. This guy right here had an amazing year. I thought he would be the weak link in the secondary, and he was not. Brandon Stevens had an amazing year playing corner for us this year. Was he the greatest corner since sliced bread? No, he was not. But again, I thought he was going to be the weak link. He was not. He held his own, uh, made play after play. Uh, got, he was targeted a lot. And toward the end of the year, he was not the guy that we thought he was going to be. Like, he was automatic, like, a hey, third down, throw that Brandon Stevens and get a catch. He was not that guy. He, played, he had a hell of a year in my eyes. Opposite of him, Marlon Humphreys. 
uh, Marlon Humphreys ended the year playing and healthy. So hopefully he can have a healthy offseason and come back and at least be all-star Marlon Humphreys. Uh, I don't think we'll get all pro Marlowe anymore, but that's I'm fine with that. If we can get pro bowl Marlon Humphreys, I'm cool with it. I think we'll be good. Looking at the safety position, we do have an all-pro at safety in this second year, which is, is, is amazing. Kyle Hamilton. Um, what he did in the first two years as, as Baltimore is it, wild. It's wild. This dude's a star, man. He's a star. And I'm hoping Zoe can can use him similar to what Mike did, and he can just build up on his, his legacy, his short legacy so far, because he, he makes plays all over the field. And I hope he just don't get stuck at, at, at a deep safety. But we'll see. Depending on the personnel, we'll see. Other safety, Marcus Williams. Marcus is no slouch either. He's not Kyle, but as a, a straight free safety, Marcus can make plays. I just hope he can stay healthy. And I, I salute Marcus for playing through all the injuries he had because that was a stretch of games. Marcus couldn't even lift up his arm, and he kept going out there competing. Kept going out there competing, and I salute that, man. Like he could have easily laid it down with that pectoral muscle and you know just let Geno Stone have that. But he went out there and competed and, you know, played through it and eventually got to the point where he can get that arm up and was, I ain't going to say he was back to his old self, but he helped the defense out. Now, this slot corner position, it's a position where you can go a bunch of different ways. You can slide Marlowe down to the slot corner position and let Jalen Norman Davis be an outside guy because he's not a slot corner. But I don't think that's the best fit for the guys that we have signed. Keep in mind, EDC is probably going to bring some guys in, some vets, um, you know, we got the draft coming too, but this is just as of right now for this exercise. I think the best fit right now is this guy. And again, we haven't seen a lot of him either. He's been injured a lot. He's off injured. <laughs> and I hate to put that on, on him, but Pepe's been off injured. But when he plays, he plays hard and makes plays. We also have our Darius too. But I think Pepe gives us a little bit more than our Darius right there. So, But either one of those two guys, I think playing that slot corner – Will help us out. But I'm giving the, the nod to Pepe right now. So now I have a question for you guys uh, listening and watching. But, and put your answers in the comment section. Do you think this defense can come close to producing like the defense did last year? Just look at the guys that we have listed. And I also have a second question for you. Are there any pending free agents out there that you think we should add to this defense to help us get back to that level? And lastly, who's going to be more important? Sign who's who's the more important signing, Matabike or Patrick Queen? That's the last question I have for you. Drop all those answers in the comment section. I appreciate you guys for coming out. You could have been anywhere in the world, but you chose to be here with me. If you like the video, like the video. If you have not subscribed, please do so and hit that bell so you can be notified when the rest of these videos drop in the 2024 offseason. Super Bowl is Sunday. Still upset that we're not playing, but it's time to move on. We're looking forward to uh, New Orleans in 2025, which is the site of the last Ravens Super Bowl, and which will also be the site of the next Ravens Super Bowl. Peace.